Hi, I am Lauren Sanders, the host of the Yoga Can podcast, and it is August 17th of 2019, and you are listening to episode 16, Putting the Soul Back in Ritual. So how are you doing? Uh, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm doing I'm doing good, but I'm feeling under the weather. I've been sick for the past few days, so that's why I am adorned in my flower crown, which I made with the Joy Spreader at Northwest Yoga Feast. Uh, she, the Joy Spreader, she is this beautiful human who is on a mission to bring um, joy, love, and laughter to humanity. So whenever I wear my crown, I feel empowered and uplifted, which I really needed that um, to introduce to you my guest for episode 16. Hey, what's up? Um, so, yeah, so, um, so, but before we get into episode 16, I am wondering how everyone, if you're feeling connected to this full moon, because I certainly am, and um, now I know why. It's because this full moon is an Aquarius moon, and you are looking at an Aquarius. I, uh, I'm an Aquarius, and so last night I was in Spokane for the first time for a Friday night in a very, very long time. So um, it worked out great because last night the Lotus hosted a full moon gathering. So the Lotus, they are they were my guests for episode three. So they are like the OG of the podcast. And um, they are Aaron and Sam and they Whole, they, they are the founders of the Lotus, which is a holistic co-op here in Spokane, Washington. And every full moon, every full moon, um, they put together a full moon gathering where they feature different teachers and healers who work at the Lotus. So last night I went and I am so glad that I did. It like totally was just what I needed. And um, I want to tell you a little bit about the night. So the night started off with an astrology reading, and it just totally resonated with me. Um, come to find out that this moon is all about coming into the self, diving in, looking within, and kind of carving out that space so that you can begin to find that sense of self-love and to come into a space of how you can like best serve yourself and take care of yourself, which really parallels to episode 15, Cultivating Abundance. So that whole element of it really paralleled with like what I have going on in my own personal life and my own journey. And then on top of that, the moon of Aquarius, Aquarius is all about humanity, ser serving humanity and being a humanitarian. So it's about merging the self and serving the world. So yeah, so it is just such a sweet and powerful moon because it's sweet in the sense that you go in to look at how can I serve myself? How can I give myself more love and space? And then from that, you ultimately look at your bigger place and serving the greater good. So there's just a beautiful astrology reading. I did not do it justice. I'm not like really, that's not like my forte, but um, it just really hit home for me. Um, and then after that astrology reading, we then got into some booty yoga. Holy crap. I had no idea that that like existed. It is a fusion of dance and yoga and about letting go of energy, letting go of toxic stuff, and then coming back in so you can like cultivate and connect back to your own energy that's sustainable. And to like end that whole amazing booty yoga, we did a standing chakra alignment. Wow. That just was like, mind-blowingly amazing. And then to put the cherry on top of everything, we were led through this incredible healing meditation, which is exactly what I needed since I wasn't feeling really good and I was carrying a lot and 
I just left it all on the floor and just was lifted up. So Aaron and Sam and everyone who led last night at the full moon gathering, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for holding space for us. And, um, Please follow the Lotus on Instagram. They do events all the time, so please check them out if you're ever in Spokane. You will just not be disappointed. So um, that really is actually a great segue into introducing to you my guest for episode 16, because she is all about bringing community together through yoga. So um, I don't know about you, but have you ever wanted to bring a loved one to yoga, but it was like kind of hard? <laughs> um, whether they like wanted to go, but um, then eventually, you know, they kind of like didn't go because, you know, it's intimidating. It can be a really big commitment to go to a yoga studio. If you've never been before, you don't really know like what you're gonna get. And um, there's like such an image of what yoga is, like in a studio. It's like power vinyasa, um, you know, headstands, balancing poses, which I hope that this podcast is sort of showing you that that is not what yoga is all about. That's just like a place, there's there's a place for that in, in this world, but that isn't all of what yoga is. Like yoga is so much bigger than that. That's like a drop in the bucket. So, um, so I get it. I get that intimidation. I get feeling, you know, nervous about it. So, um, that's why I'm really in love with my guest for episode 16. Um, her name is Hannah Tolbert from Issaquah, Washington, and she is the woman behind Tribe Life Events. And so basically what she's doing is she is curating events that hold space for you, your life event, and your tribe. So the main focus is not the asana. It is about bringing your tribe of loved ones together to sit in space where you can intentionally move, be guided through meditation, Reiki, sound bowl, crystal, oils, ah, you name it, Hannah does it. And um, what's super cool is like these are curated events that are brought to you in whichever space that um, that you need them in and into whatever level or capacity. Hannah works with you to bring you an event that best serves you and your life event. Um, and she travels all around the Northwest and Pacific Northwest region. So she, she really just is serving this community in such a beautiful way and creating intention around intention and a pause around life events, whether it's a fun bachelorette party or a somber time, like someone's moving away or, you know, there's a passing of a loved one. So she's all about intentionally creating that pause in between moments so we don't just rush over it. Um, so on top of all of that, Hannah also is all about collaborating with other yogis and healers. So if you're looking to collaborate, hit her up, talk with her. I really wanna collaborate with her. I got a few things going on in my mind and um, Hannah, we need to talk. Um, all right, so I'm getting way ahead of myself. Um, so stay, please stay tuned because um, at the end of the episode, I will share with you a way or two on how you can get featured on the Yoga, po on the yoga Camp podcast. And, um, all right, here we go, um, into episode 16 with Hannah Tolbert from Tribe Life Events. Please enjoy. Oh. Yeah, so are, what are you lighting there? So I'm lighting Palo Santo and, um, cedar. Okay. Um, and I just kind of like created a little altar for myself, um, as we're talking here. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, like... Uh, I got my little Ganesh statue, a couple of crystals, and some dried cedar, and you know, just like trying to kind of reset and call in some good juju for our time. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, so tell me about that. Like, what what does the altar mean? Like, what is that all about? 
Yeah. Well, I am in um, a class right now. It's a year long um, class. It's called Earth Medicine Practitioner Training. And so essentially for the last um, six months, I've been studying, you know, how to work with the earth and your spirits um, to sort of um, connect to healing medicine. You know, um, I'm a Reiki practitioner, Mm -hmm. uh, but getting to like tap into just this deeper level of this connection to something that's like greater than myself. Um, Mm -hmm. So this class, um, one of the modules was um, altar building. And so I've always, and I think a lot of us do this, right? Unconsciously build little altars, um, you know, just little decorations or little corners of our house that feel special to us, that we feel drawn to, you know, like your little reading nook or your night table, your, you know, like we all kind of do that, I think, naturally anyway. And so during this class, we got to learn about um, altars and just um, put a little bit more thought into how and why you pick what you're picking. And mm-hmm. um, the class really taught us how to call in the elements of earth, um, air, fire, water, mm-hmm. all in the four directions of, um, you know, north, east, south, west. Um, yeah. and, and then bringing in those elements of each of those things. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So I just was like, oh, I should kind of set this little stage here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of pulls you away a little bit from your business like mode and kind yeah. of gets you more into like your natural essence and more into like your your zone. Exactly. I, I mean, guess. when I was doing it, my intention as I was calling everything in was like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to grab cedar for – um you know, like protection and connection to spirit. I grabbed my Ganesh mm-hmm. um, statue for like remover of obstacles and to just feel kind of, it's like a statue I've had for 20 years. So like to feel grounded and anchored and I grabbed my amethyst for intuition and clear quartz for like, you know, raising my vibration. And so the whole idea is like, yeah, like I want to talk to Lauren in a way where I'm getting to just channel all of the good mm-hmm. stuff and I'm not overthinking it and overanalyzing, but just like stepping out of the way and letting yeah. myself just come through. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time to do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that means a lot. You know, it you know, doing this, I do think about, you know, the guest you and because you do start to to get going and talking, yeah. and then when you listen back to the recording or listen back to the episode, you know, some I really want my guests to feel like they are happy with how they left it and what they said. So yeah, it seems like I you're getting that. yourself all getting ready. In, getting into that <laughs> mode, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So 20 years. So you've been doing yoga. You've been in this life for 20 years. Well, you know, I suppose yes and no, right? Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny because when I start to look back on a lot of the things that um, really got me excited and turned me on, like, as a young woman, Mm -hmm. there are a lot of, like, I kind of shied away from a lot of it and turned away from a lot of it in my 20s and, um, Mm -hmm. and even early 30s. And so the kind of coming back to it has been this process and coming back to this more like spiritual side of myself and like redefining what that means outside of um, regular religion, right? So Mm -hmm. yes and no. Um, Mm -hmm. Brought up 20 years because I have the Ganesh um, statue. And that was a gift that was given to me um, by a dear friend. She was actually my boss too. Um, my mom passed away when I was 19 and she gave it to me as, you know, a protection um, for, um, you know, for protection. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's always been this like anchor in my life and has gone everywhere with me and traveled with me and done all kinds of crazy things with me in my life. And so um I love it. Yeah. But, uh, that was definitely, you know, a taste of that 
the philosophies of that world, right? You know, mm -hmm. Hinduism. And um, so definitely getting a taste of that from her, from my friend Holly. Um, and then I started doing yoga, yeah, about a little um, less than 20 years ago. I think I was about 21 and I'm not okay. quite, um, you know, 40 yet. So yeah, a little shy of 20 years and, um, and then lost it, you know, would practice kind of sporadically here and there. But um, I actually have my my first mat, and um, it's like oh. totally beat up and um, just like oh. this floppy little thing. But I still like will practice on it, and um, so yeah, that's yeah. neat. Yeah. What what brought you back to the practice? So, what brought me back, and what um, started my consistent mm -hmm. practice um, was oh gosh, how many years has it been now? Probably, oh, about five years ago, maybe a little over. Um, I was working a really intense, demanding job. Um, great owners, great people to work for, but it still felt intense to me. I was kind of burning out there and not mm -hmm. sure of where I wanted to go, like feeling really attached to them and attached to the job, but like not really feeling like this is what I'm meant to do for ever or even the next 10 years, you know, yeah. um, feeling really burnt out because I was, um, I had a toddler at home. He was like two, two and a half years old. Um, my husband and I'd been together for quite some time and also just feeling the pressures of being new parents and having a new house and, you know, like all really good things, but just felt I didn't feel in control. I felt really burnt out. I felt really stressed out. I didn't feel physically like um, connected to my body yeah. and I didn't feel strong and I didn't feel healthy. And so, you know, I kind of found yoga as probably the first two things are like stress and then, you know, the vanity part of it. Like, okay, I want to lose weight and get in shape. So hot <laughs> yoga it is. Right. Um, and, you know, so, so went with that kind of mindset. Um, died my first couple of hot yoga classes um, what kind of style was it yeah it was um it was Bikram okay um, cool. yeah. yeah and I just told myself okay just pretend that you're in Thailand right now and you're on top <laughs> of a roof and the humidity is insane and it's you know it's 100 degrees but you can do it because you're in a beautiful tropical place <laughs> right so right so just stay in the room you know but and I I I listened and I took breaks and I laid down and I had a really great teacher, um, oh. Mina at B, um, B Yoga Birian. Um, she was my, she was my first teacher and kind of mentor and it just stuck. Like, you know, it just was what I needed at that time. And I just, mm -hmm. I found my way back to me through yoga and, um, it might sound cheesy or cliche or, but it's like, there's a reason that, that there is like a yoga epidemic. Like we're addicted to it mm -hmm. for a reason because it's so, it feeds us in so many different ways. You know, yes, okay. I got the stress relief. Yes. I got the physical workout. And then I was doing this whole other healing energetically that I mm -hmm. didn't even really fully understand. Right. So, um, yeah. I that can was, relate to that for sure. Cause it is one of those things where physically, because I started off just physically doing it, not yeah. even thinking it of it as understanding the philosophy. I didn't even really know there was philosophy to yoga. Right. And then as I started to get deeper into my practice, I was, I remember I was walking away from a yoga class and I thought to myself, what is going on? Like, I know there's <laughs> more to yoga than just the, like what I just did. Yeah. So that's what got me into the, tra into, t into taking a teacher training. Cool. And then that began to, like you said, open up my eyes to the deeper stuff that was, that was available to me in the practice of yoga if I wanted to go there. Yeah. And now that I know it's there, it's kind of like, I just naturally am called to tap into certain parts yep. of me that are accessible because of the practice. Yep, exactly. And it just kind of like, it in a way, yoga kind of makes me feel like invincible 
yeah. but not in a sense of like, oh, I'm, I can do any, I don't know. I guess it does kind of make you feel like you can kind of do anything or not, anything yeah, not possible. That, not, not like, not invincible as in, I won't ever feel any pain, but yeah. that I've got the tools to deal with whatever is going to come at me. Like, totally. I can, I can handle it. Yeah. And it might be messy and it might not be pretty and it might really hurt, but like I can, I can handle it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's yep. really powerful and yep, yep, yep. yeah, it's neat to kind of see it start to overlap into stuff off of the mat. I yeah. think, you know, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. And I think for me now that's where I'm at in my yoga practice is that okay. it's actually probably more defined by what happens off the mat than on the mat. Um, mm -hmm. And, and you know, now I continue to do the physical part, but that's one part of everything else that's happening within that, that mindset shift, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about what is manifesting off of your <laughs> yoga mat? Ooh, fun. Well, I yeah. mean, my business, Tribe Life Events, is definitely... Um, a manifestation of like yoga off of the mat. I'm just realizing I should turn my phone on silence and make sure that I don't have any like dings coming through. <laughs> but um, yeah, so my business Tribe Life Events um, continues to just kind of grow and find these new branches and new outlets and new ways of giving. And um, so it started as um, the idea is that it's personally curated yoga events that come to you to celebrate and honor all of your life's occasions. So that could be anything from, you know, birthday parties, baby showers, lots of things mm -hmm. around weddings. Um, but it can also be times of transition, you know, um, times of um, the hard transitions and the fun transitions. But, you know, anytime you need to gather your tribe together, and again, it's like the mini retreat that comes to you. So I have all of the mats, all of the bolsters and equipment, and I kind of just set up the mini studio or retreat wherever it works. You know, maybe it's your place or we rent a space or we're doing it out in the backyard or the park or something like that. Um, but you just arrive to everything set up. You and your tribe get to just bliss out with a really nice yoga class. Then we do a little food and eating and drinking um, and we do a heart connective activity something that connects us um, and sort of takes a moment to pause and look at whatever it is that we're celebrating. So mm -hmm. maybe it's the wedding or maybe it's a baby shower. Maybe it's that your best friend is moving or something like that. Oh, yeah. But so the yoga is truly an excuse. It's, it's a word that I can say to you and all of these things come to mind, right? Like, ooh, blissed out, like feeling good in my body, feeling kind of goddessy, you know, or um, mm -hmm. feeling just very connected to your body. So already all of these ideas have been elicited that like just from saying the word yoga. And yeah. so really I use it as an excuse to get you onto the mat and get you already tapped into what I want you to be feeling then of course the class gets you feeling that way. Mm -hmm. And so by the time we go to the heart connective activity, you really are ready to like connect in right. this way and like, and like express and um, oh, feel. Wow. And so it's, they're powerful. Um, yeah. And the yoga, the movements, again, they're just the gateway, you mm -hmm. know, to like open it up. So okay. Yeah. They're, oh, I they're hear really what you're fun. saying. That is, that is, oh, I totally love that. In a way you're just, you're, you're, you're kind with the yoga. It's breaking down some weeds that might've overgrown on that barrier to bring people more in and open them up to a deeper connection yeah. that they might not always, you know, be able to get to. Exactly. Yeah. And the coolest part is that, you know, the personally curated events tend to be very much a mix of some people who like have a regular practice, mm -hmm. people who do some yoga or who have maybe tried it. And then the other half are like people who have never tried it and are like, I don't know what you're talking about, downward facing dog. Right. And it's awesome because 
it gives them a little taste and it, mm -hmm. and you know, I have had many people start practicing because of like taking either a workshop or a personally curated event and like getting to feel good in their body and then going, yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's what yoga is. Yeah. That's what I, that is really cool what you're doing because you are pulling it away from just it being a physical practice. Yep. It's, and a studio experience where mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try that yoga class and pay the drop in fee, right? Like there's a total different experience. Yeah. When you, when you have that mentality, which is awesome, right? It's great mm -hmm. too, but this is so different. So it's it really is cool. That is so beautiful. Thank so you. how how did you come up with this? Yeah, actually, it's a really fun story. Um, Good, so, share it. <laughs> right? So back to the burnout, you know, so I yeah. had found my way to, to yoga and to a regular practice. And I um, was the director of operations for four restaurants. So oh. running a team of, you know, about 100-ish people, give or take at any time, um, like 12 to 15 managers at any time. And you know, a couple of owners and, and then the toddler and husband and all that. So it was crazy, you know, and I just was like, okay, I know I'm going to make a shift. I just don't know what it is. Um, and so I was, but I was open. Right. And the studio owner had said to me one day, you should teach. And I just was like, girl, you are crazy. There is no way. Bye. See you tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. like, okay, Nina, you're cute. See you later. <laughs> and, and it just like all of a sudden a light bulb went off and was like, wait a minute. Oh, actually, maybe I could. And then immediately my mind went to, well, how do I make it a career? And so my mind went to, I'm going to then, okay, if I'm going to do it, I'm going all in and I'm going to open up a studio. Okay. So I went into my training with that kind of mindset and really started kind of digging into what it would take to open a studio and just researching and meeting tons of people and going to as many places as I could and, um, and just expanding. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. then taking training and taking bar training and starting to teach and all of that. Um, and then what was your, oh, what was your training yeah. in? Yeah. So, um, so the first training I took just by default of like, like as soon as I, you know, got the idea, I was like, oh, I want to do something right now, you know, mm -hmm. and I needed something that would work with my schedule. So I waited for a yoga training that would work for my schedule. And I took bar training first. And I took that with Bar Bohemian. Um, uh, Adrian Kimberly, she is in Seattle. She has two studios um, and has a, just a very beautiful, um, it's a 40 hour training actually that's not true it was a 60 hour training plus you had to take all of these classes plus you had to like do all this journaling and like I mean it was a really big bar training like over six weeks whereas a lot of people take bar in like a weekend um so oh. it was really intensive um and and awesome and so I started teaching bar right away and then I went into um training for vinyasa okay. um, which was my primary training um you know, we've talked about everything and really though, so I took that training with Spira, um, which is a studio. They have one in West Seattle and then one in um, Issaquah. And she's very focused on, her name's Dora. She's very focused on the alignment, you know, like very focused on alignment, very focused on the fundamentals, but really more about yoga, as this lifestyle, right? And as this right. Principle, what are the other eight limbs? And the training yeah. that I took was a year, no, nine months long. Oh, so wow. we went one month a weekend um, and, or excuse me, one, <laughs> one weekend a month. And, um, and then in between you had to take all these, you know, so many classes and you had all these readings and assignments and like mm -hmm. at least, a, at least one book a month if not more, mm. plus all this other homework. Um, we had to do like 40 days of meditation and like uh, all kinds Sounds of awesome. awesome stuff. So by the time I was done, you know, nine months later, right. like I was a different person. Yeah. You know, like, um, I was prepared for life in a totally different way. So mm. I will always like, I, I adored that training because it was long and intensive. Um, mm -hmm. That's how mine was too. Yeah. 
it just, you can just fully dive in. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you were in it and you had time to digest everything and then apply it and, and see it. And Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I I, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Gives you a chance to like evaluate like, okay, what am what I learned, how does that apply to me? Where are some parts, places in my life that I can adjust or how does it serve me? Yes. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah it was great. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I had, um, well, at that point, actually, so I, I left my my job and okay. kind of wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do, but was like, we were moving and it just made the most sense. And so I left that job um, and just basically the idea for tribe life came about one day to my girlfriend and I, like a soul sister, like we were having a a girl's day. My husband and son were gone. So she'd come over to like, I think stay the night and just like have a girl's day. So we were like hiking. She had just finished her yoga training as well. Oh, cool. And, um, you know, my wall at this point had like my whole vision for the studio, like mapped out, like on giant poster boards, like, (laughs) this is what it's going to feel like. This is what it's going to be. This is the community I'm going to serve. This is how I'm going to serve. So that was all like there. And then we just started talking about a birthday party that she had had, where they had gone to a yoga studio, their friend taught a class and they like painted a mandala together and they just had Mm -hmm. this really cool experience. And she and I had worked together in the restaurant industry for years and we're really close friends. And like, we just were talking about this experience she'd had. And we were like, wait a minute, like we should do that. Yeah. Like we should do that. We have all this event experience um, and we have yoga now and we could create these events for people that would be heartfelt and like mean something and really slow people down. And um, so like literally in within an afternoon, like that idea dropped and then we had, we went on a hike. We had the business name. We were like, let's, let's do it. Let's set a, let's set a date for our first event. Let's do a Facebook event right freaking now. And let's invite <laughs> all of our friends and let's just freaking do it. Let's do it. And so within a couple of hours, we had like pulled the trigger and, wow. and it was That's just wild. And it was just fun. Right. Because yeah. I had like, oh, I was, I'm going to do a studio. So it means all of this. So I think that that focus allowed me to free up in a way that I could like lean into something like that and just be like, Mm -hmm. yeah, do it Mm -hmm. and not let fear take over at all. Cause I, you know, yeah. So you were um, there, like you knew you were going to make a change. So you were ready to get into something and explore it. Yep. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So we did um, the first event and we got to work together for a couple of months and it was super fun. I'm just grabbing my phone charger. Okay. Super amazing. And then um, it just made sense for her to move on and be focused on some other things that she was excited about and um, Mm -hmm. getting married and all of that. So I um, kept the, um, yeah, I kept Tribe Life and just have been rocking by myself for the last, um, about a little over a year, almost like a year and a half, um, on my own. Okay. Um, Yeah. How how are you, do you still do community events or are you Mm -hmm. now getting hired out? So exactly. So basically, you know, since that afternoon, it's grown Mm -hmm. into so many different, um, levels. Mm -hmm. And so, started doing the workshops and gatherings. I do still do those. Um, okay. This week, um, I think by the time this airs, it'll be past this, but it, it, summer solstice is coming up. So I'm doing an event, um, a community event um, for summer solstice. Last weekend, I did one at a winery that was open to the public. Um, so they're always just, you know, usually seasonally based. I'll, I'll, I do a lot of collaborations with other people mm-hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Um, where we get to work together and kind of bring both of our assets together. Yeah. Um, Are you open to, you know, connecting with people who would like to collaborate? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, some of my, and, and I'm definitely, you know, I'm so interested in meditation, Reiki, yoga, you know, heart connection, mindfulness, like so many different topics that I'm not 
um, yo like I don't have to be the yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I can also add other things and somebody else can teach the yoga or vice versa. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes I do events where there's not yoga at all, you know, and we're, okay. we are focused on something totally different. Um, the three parts of my business, um, I guess there's four. So there's the um, <laughs> personally curated yoga events. There's the workshops and gatherings that I do um, that are just open to everybody. And then um, I do Reiki. And then I have mindfulness for the workplace. And so that is where I come in and work with your team and talk about, um, you know, really just break down, like, what is mindfulness and what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Why is it important? What does it do to the brain? And then how do you use that as a tool to achieve the right kind of mindset that you need to be in your workspace, whatever that is, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, the other week I worked with um, the Pike Place Fish guys, right? So their oh, cool. work environment is totally different than um, tomorrow I'm going to WeWork and I'm going to work with, um, you mm -hmm. know, there's all different kinds of entrepreneurs um, and, and businesses within that space. So, mm -hmm. but it's like, we all need it. We all need mindfulness. We yeah. all need um, to be in a certain mindset in order to achieve the productivity that we want um, and to kind of just live at ease in this world, right? Like, and I, I have 20 years of management experience. And so I come with the like, oh, I felt the burnt out. <laughs> right, yeah. I know what it was like. And so what I do is show the team simple movement they can do right in their desk in whatever they're wearing. Okay. Um, and then I teach them about breath, awareness, and intention, um, and just little tiny tweaks to just mm -hmm. kind of help um, bring a little bit more awareness and calmness to their day. Right. Yeah, little yeah. minor adjustments that you they might even be doing, yep. but it's just adding that intention behind it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So those Jeez, are- you're, um, a you're one busy mama. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. So yeah. yes. And I'm um what a blessing. Yeah, exactly. It's like beautiful. today, you know, I woke up and was like, this is really cool. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for the life that I have. Um I got to teach classes today at um the studio that I teach at, which is called Pineapple Life Studios. We're in Snoqualmie. Um, oh. which I know is a little ways away for you guys, but if anybody's out and about in this area, it's so gorgeous. Um, but, you know, it's like, cool, I get to go teach. You know, I get to yeah. um, then do a podcast. So mm -hmm. awesome. Then I'll spend the rest of the afternoon, like, checking my emails and getting ready for my meeting tomorrow yeah. and then pick up my little dude, you know, and I happen to have, you know, the evening free tonight. So it's like, and get to be with my family tonight. You know, I feel really lucky. Right. Yeah, really nice. yeah. Sounds like you've kind of found that balance that's sustainable. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, growth is always, anytime you're an entrepreneur, growth is um, always on your mind yeah. and always thinking about how do I scale and how mm -hmm. do I, you know, make more money and and work less and you know you're <laughs> always thinking about that um yeah and so i'm i'm that's just my own nature too i just mm -hmm. i love to just continue studying and growing and learning more stuff so yeah this is just too. just the beginning <laughs> so how have you seen your tribe life evolve though like what yeah. what's what's going on with yeah with that whole community that you're growing? Well, I would say that the business and the community are such a, at every step of the way, are such a mm -hmm. mirror for me and like what I'm going through. And it's so true that you kind of attract, you know, people that um, that you either need or that show you something, right? Or, or that are similar to you in some way. Like, um, so what I would say is kind of evolving or like what's happened with the community over the last, um, you know, 17 months or so is the stepping into ourselves. Like, and I think because I do work with a lot of women, um, I do have men at my events and it's, I always love to have gentlemen at my events, but it's predominantly female. Um, and so I see this just more and more like stepping into 
ourselves and stepping into this um, level of spirituality with ourselves. And again, I say that as a mirror for myself because it's happened for me in the last couple of years too, that um, it's just this connection to something deeper mm -hmm. um, and stuff that I, you know, there's even just my website, for instance, like I say, like I demystify the woo woo um, and like, or demystify the woo and something like that. And it's, that was really important for me to say at that time because I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm coming on like too strong for people. Well, now I feel like people are, they're ready. Like they're like, oh. yeah, bring it on, bring all that woo. Like, um, okay, you know, going to events where I would think like, oh, people aren't going to be into what I have to say about crystals or, um, mm -hmm. you know, like doing a bridal shower where we're doing crystal 101 and there's moms and aunts and, the 85 year old grandma and <laughs> the grandma is the one who knows the most about crystals, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like, I just very unexpected, you know, or going to, um, doing, um, like bachelorettes with again, that same age group, right? Like really mm -hmm. ranging all over the place and moms and daughters and, um, people like all wanting to pull Oracle cards and like, mm -hmm. Oh, what's it say? And what's that mean? And Ooh, look at this. And, Oh, this is just the message I needed. And, just people just wanting that, like this connection to something that's bigger than them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we want it because we are, we're moving into this age of technology, right? And it's a, mm -hmm. not moving into this age of technology. We're, <laughs> we're in it. We're yeah, we're in it, it. Right. <laughs> and we're, but what I mean by that is like, we're, we're just going deeper and deeper into that and into the mm -hmm. technology. And I think that we kind of want this, like, we want this soul connection to something else, you know? Right. So, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and also like back with ourselves, yeah. you know, yeah. to turn Grounding inward. And, yeah. yeah. And you've said it, like what you're seeing happen in your community is a mirror of yourself. Yeah. And so in a way, what you're doing for with, when you hold this space is, you're putting a mirror up for people so they look inward at themselves and yeah. reflect and take that time to just check in on a bigger scale, like not just physically, like, but emotionally yeah. and spiritually. Yeah. And that's what, that's just so neat. Like you're really, you're giving me the chills. Oh, Hannah. I'm so it's, glad. Like, you're just Thank such you. a joy. Like when you're Thank speaking, you. you're just smiling and like, mm. I know what you're doing. It, you're just feeling it and you're in the groove. I really am. It's I'm trying so to, cool. Thank you so much. Cause you know, like you, you, again, as an entrepreneur, you're always analyzing what you're doing and like, how am I being of service and how am I helping others? You know, like, I think I get so much out of it that a lot of times I'm like, I'm not, I'm not helping anyone. Right. You know, am I really I'm doing so this? <laughs> but, but, um, to hear that, um, reflected back means so much because, um, my, that is my mission is to create, you know, feeling in people's heart that ripples out into their community and their lives and, um, and that we show up differently, you know? And so I hope that the events and the workshops and, you know, the mindfulness and the meditations and all of that, I hope that it gets people to show up in the world in the way that they feel like them, their best, most authentic selves. So yeah. yeah. You know, I just thought of something. It would be really cool if you and I collaborated I'd and we it. could somehow, you know, invite people from the podcast or listeners, loyal listeners to come and experience you. And I, would I don't know, we'll it. have to brainstorm it, but I think that'd be such a neat idea. Me too. I'm don't totally you? in. Yeah. yeah. It would I be would so fun. It. We're not um, that far away. No, we're not. So that was my next question. Yeah. What's your reach? Where, yeah. how far will you go? <laughs> you know, I mean, really, I'm, <laughs> I'm down to wherever. You're like, I'll go to Hawaii to for a bachelorette exactly. party. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and, and, you know, I do talk to people about um, traveling. So I am okay. talking to somebody right now, like about an event in Arizona. Um, and so I'm totally up for it. You know, it's just, there's just more to consider when we do it because, um, obviously I can't fly with 20 mats and 20 bolsters and, <laughs> um, but, um, yeah. I'm definitely up for travel, 
Right now, what is, you know, really common for me, though, is to travel around Washington. Um, okay doing um events over in Leavenworth and Winthrop and um a, like Lake Cleelum and lots of different you know places where people will go to have an experience and then I get added on to their experience um okay. so I'm really up for coming to meet people wherever yeah Neat. oh I um, love to yeah. hear that yeah, yeah, it's, you know, and I, I try to make it a fun weekend usually like, okay, if I'm, you know, I'm driving out there, then I'll, I'll go early and stay the night or something like that. Do something fun and make it an adventure. So, well, we have so many neat things to see here in exactly. our area. I mean, it's just, you got to do that. This state is huge and we have like all of the different ecosystems. It's really cool, mm. actually. So I yeah, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so where so one place I like to ask all of my guests this because you know I talk to everybody from our region from the Pacific Northwest so oh what's your dog's name his name is Harlow and hi he, Harlow he can hear your voice and so he's he's basically just trying to get my yeah. attention he just wants yeah. to make sure that I'm focused on him and not anybody right. else that makes sense. I He's totally a hundred pound golden doodle who's like, it's like oh. having a small bear in the house. <laughs> yeah. He's awesome though. Yeah. We, ha we have two dogs too. Thank you. Yeah, Pomeranian and then an Australian shepherd. Cute. And actually this weekend we're watching the Australian shepherd's mom. So oh, cool. my in-laws, that's their dog. Cool. Yeah. And they're so oh, cute. Fun. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh loves dogs yeah I know so my so I like to ask everyone this what is one place in your area that if someone would come to visit that they should check out yeah yeah um well I mean honestly it would be such a fun day if they came so I live in Issaquah so it's like we all know Seattle Seattle's awesome there's tons mm -hmm. of stuff to do there it's great um but if <laughs> I it's but great. But if I was coming out this way, I would make a stop in Issaquah. And honestly, going to the studio that I teach at in Snoqualmie, um, Snoqualmie Ridge, Pineapple Life Studios, their studio is so cool. It's got a huge salt wall, a Himalayan salt wall oh, that's maybe. wall to wall. So the, the studio itself is just gorgeous. So I would take a class there. Then I would go for like a hike up to... Um, Rattlesnake Ridge or go walk around Rattlesnake Lake. Okay. And then I'd go hit up one of the local spots to eat. There's so many local restaurants. So you could go in Snoqualmie or you could come into Issaquah, go downtown in Issaquah and just park mm -hmm. your car and just like walk up and down Front Street. There's so many cute places. And take the back road. Exactly. Like the back road from Snoqualmie. And yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. We did that a few weekends ago and it was so beautiful. It blows my mind all the time when we, we drive and we're literally five minutes from our house and we're next to a river. And yeah. I mean, I have hiking trails right next to my house. We have bears in our yard. Oh my <laughs> Legit. Gosh. Which really? Is, um, yeah, which is cool and also mm -hmm. a little bit terrifying. But, you know, we just we're smart and we, yeah. we all keep our boundaries. But um, mm -hmm. anyway... It's, it's a beautiful area, and that's what's so cool about this area is that it is just, you know, without traffic, just 15, 20 minutes from the city. Mm -hmm. um, so you can buzz right back to the city and do whatever you were going to do. But if you're coming through this way, like, take take some time and spend some time out here. It's awesome. Yes. Enjoy the, enjoy the journey. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Hannah, what does yoga mean to you? Ooh. Uh, I, I mean, I feel like we kind of talked about it you know like yeah. for me it really is a way of being mm -hmm. um it's a way of of I mean the eight limbs are just like you know for some people the ten commandments that's like mm -hmm. the easiest thing to kind of compare it to it's sort of how um you tune yourself to be for 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 life um yeah. so it's you know it's kindness it's um it's your morals. It's, you know, the way you move your body. It's um, the way you even think about the food that you put in your body, you know. Um, it's it's so much. So it covers all the bases. Um, so it's a way of being. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. And I love it. <laughs> I do too. I know the more that, that I've been doing it, the more it's just this whole, my whole self is just opening up even more. And then I'm a lot more conscious of my actions yeah. on a, on a bigger level yeah. than I think I really ever have been before. Cause yeah. I've always been very spiritual in my life. Mm-hmm. That has come very naturally to me. Mm-hmm. Some will say that I have a very strong higher chakra Uh huh. <laughs> and Love it. Um, so, but now it's just kind of taken on a whole different meaning, really thinking about like what, what I put in yeah. and, and also what I put out and how, yeah. And how those two kind of connect with each other. It you know? truly, really, I, and I've been reflecting on the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, and how to explain like, well, how do I feel now compared to how I felt before yoga? Mm-hmm. Um, and there truly is this like space between thoughts and reactions that you, you, you know, the longer and more that you practice yoga and meditation, you become the observer of your thoughts. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that like, you know, you're, I always use this expression like that. We're all like floating around on bliss clouds, right? It doesn't mean that life isn't hard or it doesn't get stressful or isn't challenging, but it's the way that you deal with the challenges. And you have just even these microseconds of space to think about the way that you're going to react or Think about what's happening to you and how it feels in your body, in your heart, in your mind, whatever, right? Like it's, it's these microseconds add up to like huge things. And it is, it's like miraculous. The way that you just can like, whew, I've got more space. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of filling up that it's, it's experience in the space to experience the feels yeah. of what you just went through instead yeah. of just speeding right through it. Yeah. It's sitting back and observing and that's yeah. what your that's what tribe life I think is all about, right? Yeah. Sitting so back true. and taking time to create that space around a life event or around mm-hmm. yourself and your in your tribe, your community. Exactly. Uh, I love that full circle. Uh, oh my <laughs> it's gosh. So true. It's this so is true. neat. I really yeah. I bet your classes are exceptional. Your yoga Thank classes. You. That's yeah. really nice. Well, your... I try to show up um as much as I can. I think Oh, that... well, that's nice of you. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I mean, but I really do like I I'm one of those people who just puts a a lot of thought into the classes that I teach. And, and I'm, I'm my biggest, biggest critic, you know, um, I'm mm-hmm. still a baby teacher when in comparison, I'm still really learning a lot. And, and my main thing is to like two things. One is to keep people safe, you know, and keep mm-hmm. like, so I, I teach what I know I can keep people safe and, um, feel good in their bodies. And then, um, Two is I hope they have some sort of experience, you know, I hope they get to have some sort of experience out of it, um, whatever that is for them. So what's your own practice like, like your own yoga practice? (laughs) So (laughs) funny, you know, I joke all the time, like, God, I miss being a student um, (laughs) where you could just go take a class and, you know, we have them every once in a while where you just fully let go. But most of the time you're like, oh, damn, I love that transition. That was awesome. (laughs) Or, you know, yeah. you just, um, you're just, you're, you're for once you become a teacher, whether you have ever taught a class, like once you take teacher training and you've kind of like seen behind that, that, that veil, yeah. it, it changes the way that you experience a class and the way that you listen. And, um, totally. so, so my, my current practice is I try to take whenever I can, I mm-hmm. try to come up I try to do some sort of movement every day, you know, whether that's yoga or bar, or I've been loving doing Qigong in the morning, like before my meditation, I'll like drink my coffee and just do like a 10 minute, you like literally just a YouTube of like, what's Qigong? Qigong? Um, So what it is, is it's kind of like Tai Chi. It's you're, you're moving your Chi. Um, and your energy, right? Your, um, that life force, which is very, it's this, it's what yoga does too. You mm-hmm. know, it's the same thing, but, um, you're connecting with the different elements and, um, you know, we have 
these merid you know we have meridian lines and um that all run along the body and so you're connecting with these different meridian lines to sort of activate um and detoxify internal organs and honestly just to kind of start like moving your body and getting the fluids going and you know what i mean like just getting yeah. the joints loosened so it feels great in the morning um i try to you know i'm i'm active and i teach um but I miss having more time to take more classes. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm actually currently trying to like create some consciously create space for that. Going back to like, you know, taking teachers classes because right. you get so much out of it. Not you do. Just the physical, you get so much out of it. So yeah, I think that it's it makes you just a lot more well-rounded, especially okay. since you are having your own business and it's in the world of yoga and holistic yes. healing. It, it will, it will serve you a yes. lot because it kind of expands your community, your awareness yeah. of what's going on and, exactly. and it connects you to more people and, and all to of yourself. It. Like, yeah. It's all of so, it. It's so good. You know, so yeah. I, I miss not being able to take more classes. My, you know, my class, my classes that I teach, like I personally love to some, so the class that I teach most right now is my yoga Reiki class. Okay. So I start with a meditation, then we do flow, like just kind of gentle, like a lot of, you know, sun salutations and warriors and all that, okay. you know, just a really cool flow, usually based on a chakra, like I'll do cool. one chakra per um, class. Um, and then we do yen. Um, mm -hmm. And then that's when I can come around and do Reiki. So I do like half the classes flow and I don't get them like crazy warmed up or too hot or too stretched mm -hmm. out. But then we go into Yen for the last half of the class. And then that's when I come around and I give everybody Reiki during their Yen. Um, so it's oh. really fun. And so that's totally different than what I like to do. So like, do I like that class as a student? Yes, it's amazing. Yeah. But, you know, I practice vinyasa and I love power and I love Do you still do Bikram? I love it. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't t currently have a studio that I take it at regularly. Mm -hmm. I take a I do take Hatha and people, you know, with that it's where they're they're doing the 26 postures, but sometimes it's mixed up and they're oh, adding in cool. different fusion and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, everybody calls it something different, like mm -hmm. Hatha or the 26 and two or Bikram or, but um, yeah, I love, I love sweaty hot classes, but what I like to teach is like the chilled out yen stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, just because that's what makes the most sense for my, you know, my classes for my business, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I'm coming to somebody for their right. birthday party or like wedding, like we want to chill out and have a good time. You're not trying to like get your vinyasa and like do 20 chaturangas before you, so, you know, like you sit and have champagne. Yeah. So we just have a good right. time. Um, and connect. I do, and I do teach bar, which is really fun. I love to teach bar and I love to yeah. take bar. Yeah. Mm, I've yet to do one, but I really need to. Uh, well, I got obsessed with it. Yeah. yeah. I know. That's what I, I think that there's so many ways that bar and yoga connect though, because the bar yep. strengthens you yep. and then the yoga just like, yep. It creates that space. Yep. Yeah. And, and truly like in a, on a very like, you know, for your, the muscular body and especially the female body, it just reacts so positive to positively to the combination of the mm -hmm. the strength and flexibility that comes from yoga and then like the toning and lengthening that comes from bar when mm -hmm. you combine them together like you just feel so strong it's awesome I need to get in there I, I've been saying that for months now yeah and I, you're gonna I, love it try it know, you'll love I, it me too I yeah. work at a place too where I have the classes for free to me. So oh I should just go and do it. I don't know what I'm waiting for. And they're you great know, teachers. I've tried a lot of new classes lately because the studio that I teach at offers so many different cool classes. And it's really good for our bodies and our brains to go do stuff that we're not used to, you yeah. know, and like, and like move in weird, awkward ways and do stuff wrong and fumble all around and be really sore the next day. And <laughs> Yeah, it's and like class. laugh at yourself and exactly. just 
Yeah, I know, because if that's how we're reacting to stuff on the mat, off of the mat, our reaction to stuff yes. when it, we fumble or life gets weird, it's like, okay, I got this. I, exactly. I saw the funniest, funniest thing on Instagram, and I really want to share it with you. Oh, I love it. Yeah, okay. bring it on. It's a meme. Let me just find it if I can. Um, I think her name... Maybe I can just find it in my previous. Okay, so <laughs> I should just screenshot it. So it. her her caption is full moon vibes. And then what you see is, can you see that? No, because it's blurring because of your cool camera thing. Oh yeah. So I'll 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 just message it to you. So yeah, basically dude. it's like a kid. The first photo side by side. The first photo is a shoe on this person's face and it says before spiritual awakening. <laughs> and then it and then it and then it gives you like the bird's eye view and the person's hand is in the boot on their face. Well, and then it's oh. spiritual awakening. Oh. That's so funny. awesome. I love yeah. that. Oh, yes, please screenshot it. I will. I'll send it to you. I'm like, that is so hilarious. Yeah. So good. Well, this has been really fun, Hannah. Oh, thank, thank you. So you. Much, Lauren. This is oh such gosh. a cool opportunity. I'm so grateful. Thank you. And so glad. It, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed that episode as much as I did. If you want to get a behind the scenes look into my journey to record with Hannah, you can find a blog where I write all about that on my website at yogacan.com. And if you enjoyed the episode, please show it some love. You can subscribe on whichever platform you are listening on. You can follow Yoga Can on Instagram or Facebook. Also, give Hannah a follow on Instagram at tribe low score life low score events. And please, please, please leave a review of the podcast. Um, the reviews help a lot with the ranking of the podcast. And on a bigger like level than that, it helps to like showcase these awesome yogis that we have in our region. So if you have time, please leave a review on whichever listening platform that you hear the podcast on. And um for all of you out there who are in the process of cultivating abundance in your life, I am sending you love and energy. And I also have some heartfelt free goodies for you on my website, yogacan.com. Find them and um, I'll link to that in the show notes down below. And um, as Hannah mentioned, she hosts mindfulness in the workplace workshops. She will do community events. She teaches at a few yoga studios. And we didn't talk about it in this episode, but Hannah is going to be leading a Reiki and soul retreat. Yeah, it's a training coming up this October. It's a really unique offering. It's dual, live, in-person, and online three-part soul retreat where you receive a Reiki certification and yoga. So beyond, um, and then like beyond all of that, this training really like brings you home. So with that said, um, can you all just join me in oming home? So instead of saying om, we're going to say home. All right, you ready? We'll do a cleansing breath followed by home. Um, wow. That's pretty cool. I felt those vibrations a bit. <laughs> so uh, links to all of the Tribe Life event goodies can be found in the show notes below. I feel like a little flight attendant. You can find the links. In the show notes. Um, uh, as 
we mentioned at the beginning of this episode, how can you get featured on the podcast? I really, really want to get you, the listener's voice on the podcast. So I came up with an idea. You introduced the episode. So here it is. I wrote up a script that I would love for you to record yourself singing. So here's the script. Hi, my name is from wherever you're listening from, and you're listening to the Yoga Can podcast. So here it is. Hi, my name is Lauren Sanders from Spokane, Washington, and you're listening to the Yoga Can podcast. Record yourself saying that on whichever voice memo app that you have on your phone. Email it to yogacan509 at gmail.com. And um, I have that whole script also written on the website. I'll link to that as well in the show notes. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I am really super excited to get these recordings from you and to start having your voice and energy introducing each episode. Yay, it's going to be really fun. Um, going into next week, so next week's episode 17, and this is a much requested topic. I'm not sure if you know, but I am an accessibility yoga teacher, and um, a few of you have asked me what accessibility yoga is. So I thought I would go straight to the source, and I got to sat, sit down with Mary and Brenda. They were the teachers who led the accessibility yoga training, and they are going to be on the podcast next week. I am so excited for you to learn from them and for you to meet them. So please stay tuned to that. And until next time, please, please be kind to yourself. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. Let's come in so we can go out and serve the greater humanity with love and compassion and empathy. And that all starts with creating space within. So um, thank you so much for listening. Namaste and Shanti peace to you and your beautiful household.